Imagine the year is 1983. Hawaiian shirts, pop collars and shoulder pads are all the rage. Synth pop plays on top of the pops and business professionals are being introduced to the Lotus 123. And it's in this year, 1983, that Hewlett Packard deliver the HP 7475A. And it's here we have one such example. A little discoloured and battle scarred, but hopefully nothing which we can't put right with a little work and elbow grease. Born in an era where you could smoke and possibly drink at your desk, this plotter has lived through it all. I bought this machine off eBay a little while ago and it did come with some pens, albeit they do look a little bit tired. In fact, I had two packs of pens. Uh, as you can see here, I have a number of colours. These were provided by RS Components, so there's still a sticker on the back, although there were no dates, so I don't know if these are 35 years old or not. Pens go in this little carousel, uh, and there's a little small dust cap to stop the pens from drying out at the end, and the carousel fits back in here. I also bought from eBay recently these 3D printed collars. So these are little plastic collars that are tapered towards one end, but they kind of fit the same diameter as the HP pen, so they fit into the carousel a little bit like this. Oh, I've got it the wrong way around, bear with me. Ta da! But this allows you to put a Sharpie pen in the top which I hope to use shortly. If we have a look at the back of the machine, we see there's a port to connect to the computer, power supply, and a means to feed paper in A3 and A4. On the left, we have a HPIB interface, which is a proprietary port that Hewlett Packard have, and alongside that, some DIP switches. So why don't we power on the plotter and have a look. Switch it on. LEDs light up. And the arm moves. So you can select pens from the carousel from the controller here. And the arm picks up the corresponding pen. So in total, I think there's six pens. and you can change between them all from here. And here's a closer inspection of the carousel and arm. And if you hold down two buttons on the front panel and switch the plotter on, it goes into demonstration mode and prints out this image.
Not bad for 35 years old. But as you can see, this plotter is a little bit worse for wear, or at least a little bit dirty. So I think it's well overdue a good clean. First things to do is to take the case off. So it's held together with some screws on the back here and the case clips to the outside. Underneath there seems to be a paper holder to help hold the A3 paper. Uh, but other than that, it's relatively easy to open. So let's begin. Don't ask why I'm wearing two watches. The Apple Watch was under repair and this was a test. Ah yes, spot the deliberate mistake, the screw in the middle. And up, off comes the case, like so. And it's now with the case off that you can really start to see some of the dirt and grime that's accumulated over these years. But all in all, it's not as bad as it seems. I think it can be salvaged and I think it can be cleaned up to a relatively good bill of health. There are some signs of corrosion on the metal case, but apart from that, everything seems fine. A bit of dust here and there. The first and easiest thing I wanted to do was to clean the case. So I've made a, uh, a dish up with some hot water and added some car polish to it. Um, car polish because it doesn't contain salt that may scratch or damage the plastic. Although, to be honest, a 35 year old plotter, not too sure who's going to notice it. But yeah, water was a little bit hot, but it should soon cool down. The clear plastic cover wasn't too dirty and was relatively easy to wipe down. Nothing too difficult here at all.
As for the case, well, it was just to make sure that the bowl was big enough to accommodate it. But yeah, giving it a bit of a wipe down with hot water soon started to lift the dirt and grime. You can see here just how dirty and grimy the cover was, but with a little bit of a rub, it soon, soon lifted off. And here we have the finished product, all clean and drying off. It doesn't look too bad at all. The stickers have remained on, which is nice, just keeps its original look. Now my original plan was to totally dismantle this and clean the motherboard, but as I stared at the internal components, I felt like I should at least leave it a little while, as it is. Now. And instead, I decided just to clean up what I could see from the outside, which was some of the external interfaces and bits of the case that you could see. So here we go.
likewise the number pad on the front there was lots of dirt and grime that had been trapped between the case and the cover of the keypad so again this needed a bit a bit of a scrub and clean Not entirely happy with some of the dirt that was behind the buttons, I then proceeded to remove the front cover and to see if I could clear the rubber pads behind and actually the dirt that was sitting between the buttons and the external front cover. Cleaning each key with alcohol and a small brush. Then returning the faceplate and putting it all back together again. Not looking too shabby there, starting to look new. And then once cleaned down, yeah, looking good. Not too bad. Better than before at least. Returning the clean case back on a little fiddly to tell you the least, but uh, yeah, eventually managed it. Here you can see me struggle, cursing, banging, but yeah, ultimately managed to get it back on once I understood what the process was. Should probably check that the machine still works. And here you have the finished job, which I hope you agree is a little bit better than what it was originally. A little bit cleaner, a little bit lighter, and a little less dirtier. Now, returning to those 3D printed pen holders that I bought. Here's the address that I got them through, or the contact. And here is the 3D printed collar. So they attach the carousel like so, drop in there and are of such a size that they fit a Sharpie. So if I take a Sharpie out of here, this pack that I bought especially, I'll drop that in, and lo and behold, it's just the right size to hold a Sharpie. But as you can see, I need to cut the case. So yep, yeah, the pen fits in there. Again, it's got the little cap to keep the tip dry. So yeah, it's my next job is to cut the case, see if I can cut that little notch out there and down the side, which will allow the carousel to hold six coloured Sharpies and I should be able to get a nice new image out of my printer. More next week, hopefully. <laughs>